Hi, welcome to part two of my part two for Celebration 2019. I did a card yesterday that you can go back and see if you've not seen it yet that has the first part of this card and it also has more of the introduction to Stampin' Up's Celebration 2019 part two. And I show more of the flyer in that first video. So you'll want to hop over and see that if you've not seen it. Except when I was showing you the products, I didn't have all of the paper. And this is my favorite paper. Um, it's the Painted Seasons, Seasons Bundle. And I'm using that again today. Oh, hang on. I don't even have my other light on. <laughs> Let me switch this on. I wondered why it looked funky in the... Um, the film. So this is my favorite paper. The Painted Seasons Bundle has images of nature from kind of all seasons and this is my favorite one. It's the mushrooms. It's not the one I'm using today but it is the next one I'm going to use when I use the bundle next. I've already made the card. Um, you can see I've kind of, well maybe my plug's lying on top of it. Let's see if I can, there we go. I didn't want to knock my camera over but I've hacked into it. Um, it's got some texture, it's got some adhesive, so it's a real fun card. But I love, this reminds me, if you are anywhere close to my age, and the Hallmark stores used to be like the place where you could go get all your knickknacks. If it had mushrooms and it had colors of the 70s, I was in autumn tones, because you know, that would have been the next phase in our little lives, and we did what colors you were. Um, but this is the stamps that I'm going to use. And in the card that I did as the precursor to this, I'll show you in just a second, I used the pine cone. Today I'm going to use the leaves and the flowers. Um, so the card that's already posted used this. And I had actually made the card that I'm going to do now, I made it first. So I needed some paper to go under, you'll see it in a minute, under the panel. And I thought about some regular card stuff, but it was really kind of harsh for the design. And so then I thought, well, I will use some wood designer series paper. But you know, when you put a piece over the top, then we all know that hidden underneath all the adhesive is some beautiful cardstock. And I didn't want that to go to waste. So I took my stitched rectangle, which is new in the Occasions catalog, and I laid it on here and I ran that through. So when it ran through, it gave me this piece here. So instead of just being buried under today's card, it gave me enough cardstock to make this card. So this card already does have a video. If you've not seen it, you can run over and watch that. So then that left me the border and then I was able to finish off the card. So it's kind of reverse now because I knew that that's where I wanted to end up. Um, so let me show you, back it up now on how I came to it. So I'm gonna use the stamps and it is a distinctive stamp, but I'm gonna kind of cover that up. So here's the paper that I'm going to use, um, and I showed yesterday in the video, but I'll show you one more time. When I get these papers and I first start to play with them, you, you, I often show you what I do with the dies, how I get them all out and I run them all through so I kind of see what, it's, what I'm working with. I do the same thing with the papers when I have a bundle like this. So I went over to my stamp thing, and I have one that's old because it's an outgoing in color and I didn't replace those with the new style. But these are the colors that are in the paper. So I just have these sitting on the table. Um, and you know, then if I'm going to use my blends or my markers or whatever, this is kind of a good, instead of having to look at the words, because um, I throw the packaging out right away. It is also in your catalog, but when you buy your designer series paper, it tells you right on the back which colors are used. So these are the colors that I have to work with. Um, so what I'm going to do today, you could actually do with ink refills. And if you're doing it, if you're a demonstrator and you're doing it at a class, you may actually prefer um, to do it that way so nothing happens to your stamp pads. Um, but for this technique, your stamp pads work. So that's what I'm using because it's just me doing the card. So I don't need all the colors for this card. So I just pulled out, I actually could have used crumb cake, but I ended up not. Um, because I'm doing some painting and I was able to make it work. So these are the colors, if you can see, that are in today's paper. So I pulled those out and pulled those aside. So what I wanted to do, this is the flower, obviously, that goes with this paper. And I wanted to get it to stamp so it looked like that because when you, you don't actually ever purchase the stamp set or the paper, it's free with a $100 purchase. So I know you all hoard paper, so you can act like you're gonna run out of it right away, and maybe some of you will if you use it for a great big project, 
but I know most of you hoard it like I do. So in 10 years, you'll probably still have some scraps of it. But assuming that you're going to run out of it, here's what you do. You can recreate this paper. You might not recreate this piece because there's so much of it, but you can do a, a pretty good job of recreating the flowers. So it is distinctive, and this is the petal pink. I think I called it Blushing Bride maybe in another video because this one kind of confuses me. And it says it's petal pink. If you have Blushing Bride on this paper, I think it would work because it's got that brown tone, tone to it because it's got, I think, the crumb cake mixed in. So I stamped it three times. And it's quite lovely, just stamped. And I will show you because it's distinctive. And so when you stamp with it, it does come with those layers of color. So that's all the flowers I need. I need three of those. And then the leaves that are in the paper. You can kind of see them hidden back in there. They're this leaf here that comes in the stamp set. This is from another card that I did. It's just stuck there, so I'm not gonna actually use it on this card. But you know these new clingy stamps, once they're, once they're stuck on there, I just leave them until I'm done playing with the, the stamps. So this will have framelits. It doesn't have framelits yet. In March, with Celebration Coordination, you will be able to buy the framelits that go with this set. So I'm going to demo it with the framelits today. You can cut them out until you get the framelits. This is not hard cutting. It's not gonna do any special design. So then how many of us love the frosted florals? We've had those in a couple of different, um, we had the frosted florals that came out at Christmas that are stunningly pretty. We have the um, show what, share what you love paper, stunningly pretty. Those are gorgeous, gorgeous specialty designer papers that have like a sheen to them. And the frosted florals could be the prettiest paper that Stampin' Up! has ever had. If you don't have that paper, you will want to get it. But I'm going to kind of recreate that look with these to go on top. So you could just paint these, but this is going to take it up a notch and they're beautiful. So what I need and I hoard these. Um, these are all empty Stellas. All of them are empty. They're just empty. But when they're empty, they're still a brush. So you're getting like a two for one when you buy the Stellas. Because when they're all gone, just save them and then you have them. I used to put um, washi tape around them when they were empty because then I knew they were empty. That was back when we first had them. And then when I realized how many empty ones I was collecting over time and I gave them away to my customers that need them. If you order from me and you need an empty Stella, just tell me and I'll stick one in with your thank you gift. If you qualify for a thank you gift, then you can also qualify for an empty Stella. So what you're gonna do, I'll do a leaf first, is this is carryover from the holiday catalog and it's the frost white um, shimmer paint. So just open this up. And then take our stamp pads, just like you could the old ones. It takes a little bit more. Um, our old stamp pads, when they were this style, you could kind of push down with your fingers like this. Um, the new ones, take your palm and just smash like this. And then it gives you a little ink palette right here. And you can see this is where I've already made my sample. So I shook it and it gives you a tiny bit of ink in here. And you just want a tiny, tiny little dab. This is why if you're doing it at a class or with, if you're gonna make a bunch of them, you might, instead of this, just want to go put some ink like on a styrofoam plate. And then what you do is you just get ever so slightly a tiny, tiny tip of the shimmer. And then where these are darker, that's where you put your ink down first and then just pull it till it runs out onto where it's lighter. And that will give you dimension and there's still a little bit of shimmer left. And you don't have to load up with um, shimmer paint every time. You can kind of tell when it starts to run out. So just a tiny dip. And it's so, so pretty. I hope you can see how pretty it is. I will hold it up for you and then I'll hold the finished card up. But you are gonna wanna go to my website and hopefully I can catch it over there. I may do like an Instagram story so I can kinda, sometimes 
Instagram when you have like the boomerang effect and you can show it back and forth you can get some of the shimmer a little bit better too so there we go I've already pre-done some of these leaves and flowers and then to wash them off you just go like this on your see I have my chamois here and see there's no more green there was green on it and the chamois it's like magic this thing is like a magic it's not even on the chamois I'm not exactly sure where it goes and then because there is a little bit of this in here if you're worried about I am not worried about my stamp pads if they get ruined in a couple of years you know to me they're a uh, consumable so I'll just buy another one and I'll let my nephews or somebody you know give them to some kids but because our stamp pads store upside down it's not gonna actually touch that or you just can't take a wet wipe or something and wipe that little bit out of there but um, if you're careful and you just get a tiny little tip then it doesn't mess with it so then with your flowers it takes a little bit more because there's a little bit more color if you see these and I have already done there I did a grapefruit one, which this is the grapefruit, and then this is the powder pink, and then there's a poppy one. So I've already colored the um, grapefruit and the pink one, so let me just do the poppy one. And again, just take your palm, smush this together, and that gives you plenty. And you can see that is from when I did it before. So when I'm all done doing this, I probably will take... It makes, I think it makes the inside of your stamp pad pretty. It's got a little bit of shimmer. So these take a tiny bit more time. And what you want to do, a little primer here on painting, if you haven't done a lot of painting. Again, a tiny, tiny bit of paint. You don't want a ton of paint. And then pick up your um, ink. And you're going to do one petal at a time. So on the ones that are a little bit more bold, kind of outline them. And then wherever there's a lot of ink on here and then put a lot of ink on your flower so kind of follow the lines especially on this one that's the poppy that's why I chose to do it so you can kind of see it a little bit better and then as it runs out use the run out to fill in your white space it's a little bit like if you've done the no line watercolor technique it's a tiny bit like that because it is going to cover up most of the stamping, which is what the no-line watercolor does. But if you do each petal on its own, it keeps the beautiful dimension that the distinctive stamp sets have. And the... Um, Powder pink ink will blend ever so slightly with whatever color it is that you happen to be working with. So you just kind of pull it in there. Eventually, your tips of these pens do get a little bit like spread out and I had one and I laid it aside but then when I was cleaning up to film I moved it because the spread out one actually works really nice for the center of these flowers so even though they might get a little bit too big for the fine tipped work then there's times when you can use the ones and then you might put a different color washi tape on it so you know that it's one that you don't want to reach for if you're doing something that's really fine I'm trying to go fast so this isn't going to be the best work because I don't I know you guys don't want to watch me color and that was why I did two of them I should have done all three and then just skipped this part but I wanted you to see how I did the the hot the shading so the center part of the flower has is really dark I didn't have my phone in the camera case I would take some pictures so I could show it to you up close before I mount it to the card I'll try to get some close-ups of the flowers themselves to put on the website so you can see them so you can see this one that's a lot of white right here 
I'm kind of trying to wait till my brush is dry. It's also easier, I know I say it all the time, but it's so much easier to see when your head's over the top. And my head is not currently over the top of this. So some of my lines I know aren't perfect, but it's watercolor and watercolor doesn't have to be perfect. So now that it's mostly colored, just go back and now I'm gonna not try to add as much shimmer so I can get a little bit deeper of the poppy color. You'll have to add a tiny bit of shimmer because otherwise there's not anything to kind of move your ink around. So grab just a little bit. And then later if you want your card to have more shimmer you can always go back and add shimmer. But this white shimmer is not the color that's in the Stella. That is the um, there were four colors of the shimmer paints in the holiday catalog and only two carried over, so it's the other one. I can't think of what the other color name is. The copper and the gold did not color carry over. So now I'm trying to just pick up where there's paint. There we go, that looks pretty good. So again, you can see this is pretty red. Get it where the table is. And then you just, and this will just rinse out when I clean my chamois. It may stain a little bit of red on here, but for the most part, it takes it out. It's a, it's a wonder pad. So just drag it on there. And that's mostly gone. I'm going to brown, so I'm not going to terribly worry, but you can see it took most of it out. Then when you're all done too on this, you're going to want to take a tissue or a little tip of a wet wipe and kind of swirl anything out of there that you may have where to put my espresso. So now I'm gonna go to the espresso and do the inside of my flower. And you can see I've done, I've done like eight of these flowers now and it, I haven't cleaned the inside of my stamp lid so it's not ruining them. Some people are a little bit more worried about their supplies than I am. So this one, if you look at the the picture of the, the paper up close, it's not a solid color. So I'm just going to dot the espresso around so it doesn't fill the whole, like, so there's still some color that shows through. Because that's how it looks in the cardstock. I'll show you again. And then it's got ever so slight highlights of espresso that outline the petals and like pull up through. They're really, I think they're more crumb cake and I did try the crumb cake, but it was just, it was too light with the shimmer. The shimmer just, it was too light of a touch. Especially on the poppy, you could kind of see it on the powder pink, but it was gonna take too long. And this was a, a pretty effect. You, if you were just doing some of the flowers, you could do the poppy on top of the other two colors and leave the poppy flower off. I did consider doing that because it's also a pretty effect. I kind of played with it for a little bit before I decided on what I liked. And really any combination of them will work for the card. So again, you can see brown and just take it over here. Smudge it on and now it's pretty much clean. Magic chamois, um, and I don't have very much in there. When you're first starting out, or if you are doing this at a class, it does tend to get more in there, but as you practice, you learn to not put your tip in there while it's dirty, and that kind of saves your stuff. So now the card is almost done. You can see, here's my flower, here's the paper, and then here's the ones I've already done. So you can get them to look pretty similar. They're larger because the stamp is larger than the paper. But overall, you can get the same effect and you could mess with it. 
Um, you could do it without the shimmer if you don't want the frosted, but I love the frosted floral paper, so that's kind of what I was going for. So now to mount this together, move this out of the way, and you can see right here, if you didn't see where I was cleaning, that is the poppy and the brown and the green have already disappeared that I cleaned those off. I don't know where, I don't know where, how the shimmy works. It's a science that I do not understand. Let me get my big shot up here. You do want to make sure, if you, if I was doing this, um, I would allow this a little bit longer time to dry, but we don't have longer. So I'm going to, first thing I'll do to just give it a second longer, this is my very favorite embossing folder and it is the Settles. And I'm gonna run this through here first. I'm gonna use this a couple of times, but you wanna do this first and then I'm gonna use it again and I'll explain it why I do it twice the second time I do it. So I'm gonna run that through first. And then this is the part of the bundle that you can't get until March unless you're a demonstrator or if you'd like to sign up and join my team then you could order as part of your starter kit. So we have it comes with two leaves so I don't know I may have stamped them too close you know, sometimes they give us multiples of these and then you do this where you stamp them so close that you can't even run them through at the same time. Mm, pretty good. And then it comes with one flower and this is one of those ones where you have to twist it to see where it goes. When I did a bunch of them the other day, I figured it out, but I've slept since then. There we go. It's this little one right here. This one, you need to look. So the Sizzix goes around. You find this little piece here, and then the Sizzix goes next to that. That was how I remembered, but I'll forget again, especially because I'm talking to you guys. And these just take one pass through because they're a framelit. I only just moved one of my leaves, but that's okay. I'm going to leave it. They get buried underneath stuff anyway, so... I was trying to leave it up where you could see it and I moved it. I did move too down. So here's one flower. I, you can kind of see the frosted on that, I think. There's one leaf. One leaf and on this one I'm just gonna get the flower. Let's see if I remember. You find this one, and this is it goes next to it. Perfect. There's my little tip. Of course, you'll have to write it down, or you'll be like me, and you'll get your stuff, and then you'll forget. I'm gonna pass through on this one. If I would have cut my paper apart, then we wouldn't have to do this so many times. This would be the powder, the petal pink, powder pink. I can never remember what color that one is. That's that one. And then I am going to cut these. So this is the poppy. And then I need one more leaf. I have so many ideas for the stamp set and. It's only available for one month, so I'm not going to be able to do them all. And then this is also one of the stitched rectangles, um, which goes with the set that I used to do the background. Um, so I'm going to pull it out to do my setting. And I'm going to do it before the stamp set doesn't come with any words. So I am using the Incredible Like You stamp set. And you know the stitched rectangles, all of our squares and rectangles run them through at an angle. So I'm gonna lay it on there like that. Oops, I don't even have the dies on here. Okay, I'm gonna lay this the same way. So it goes this way. Find that one. There we go. 
and then I just need one of these. And again, the stitch rectangles only need one pass through. If you do more than one pass with the stitching, then your paper will stick into the stitches and it makes the holes too big and they're no longer beautiful. So only do it one pass through. So this, see it already sticks a lot just with the one pass. So you don't wanna do it anymore because then it sticks and when you pull it, it's, it sticks too much this is already one time it's not as hard to get out except my skin has issues I'm gonna have to move my thing and get it and then there's the other flower those fall right out but it's just because of the stitching sticking to it I'm gonna need my big shot again at the end but I need to mount this all together for you <coughs> yeah it's really stuck in there that's why some people say they don't work, but if you do it more, any more than that, then those little things stick in there. And then it tears when you pull them. But it puts the stitches in there, and it's super pretty. It's just my skin because I'm getting old. And so when my, it hurts to touch those little cutty things. So I try not to touch the frame, the framelit, which makes it hard <laughs> to get them out when you're trying not to touch. So this is the saying, and it's from The Incredible Like You stamp set. Because it's photopolymer, I'm able to run it through first. And then this is the espresso. Okay, now we just need to mount it together. But I'm not going to mount, I'm just going to mount the front panel, and then I'm going to run it back through the big shot. And I do that for two reasons. Partly I just love the texture of this folder. I like the texture of other folders too. But it also, when you piece together a lot of pieces like this, you can see it just makes it look like a piece of paper. It's, I mean, a piece of linen. It's gorgeous. But if you do it separately, um, then this is too high and this doesn't get any of the, the texture. So if you're gonna do this technique, always do your bottom piece on its own. But we're almost done. So I think I will put, I think I'll put the grapefruit one up here at the top. The first card I did, I did pumpkin pie because that's also one of the colors that's in the, the paper. And it was, it's too orange. I don't think pumpkin pie is one of the colors in the paper. here but when you do the um when you run this through again on the big shot it's gonna smash all this together and it makes your card stay together nicely too i can go off the edge of this a little bit because i've got room on my second layer then with the leaves some of them i even pulled the stems off but you they're gonna go all the way underneath mounting these totally differently than i have on my first card i did This is the one that moved. So I'm going to stick a lot of him under there. There. Same with this one. On the card, I mean on the paper, you can kind of see it's just hints of the leaves you get. So I just want to mimic that with my stamp. Lift that up. And stick that under. So here it is before I run it through the embossing folder. That's the last step before finally, finally mounting it to the card. And so when you do this, you want to make sure on other um, folders, this one's not as important, but wherever the Stampin' Up! is, that is right side up. So when you're doing it and you want right side up, put it so the Stampin' Up!'s on top. That's the top of your embossing folder. And it doesn't make it too thick. In fact, after I decided to do this and I had not the first on the, my first mock-up card, I hadn't embossed the settles on the paper under and I 
added two or three shims to try to get it to emboss the bottom and I did it upside down and no matter what I did it was not going to emboss that bottom piece of paper so it's not too thick and then just get it nice and pressed on both sides since there are a couple of layers I'm gonna flip it upside down and do it again almost done. And then we go back. This is where I was when I did the card. See, now you can see it's got some pretty texture. Um, and it, this is so far down in the folder. That's why you do it first. So it has all some texture everywhere. But this is where I was when I started with the other. And I laid it on here and it just still needed something. And I'm going to have to move that over a little bit because it's not going to fit. Um, so this was how I came up with card number two. But I'm gonna have to pick all that up and squish it over. Here's the other card. I have a couple of them sitting around. <laughs> so there's a finished one where it all fits. I just need to move this over. I mounted my um, words over a bit too far to start. So I hope you enjoy that. It gives you that it, you can make some beautiful, beautiful papers. So don't worry about running out because before you ever run out, just figure out how to copy the paper and you will be set. It's such a pretty bundle. And if you have trouble with stamping the distinctive, then you won't have, I haven't had any trouble with this one. It stamps so well. Um, but this doesn't even stamp the distinctive. Here's the one I did today. So you can see this is one of the ones I did the pumpkin pie. I think it's a little bit too dark. I like this color selection better. But I'll put close-ups on, on my website of the pictures. And I'll fix this one before I stick it together. So I have, um, I still have a couple of Valentine things, the Valentines that aren't Valentines that I need to get to. And then I, I do have a ton of the Celebration 2 um, stuff to get up. So keep watching because I'm going to have a slew of stuff hit YouTube. So have a great day. Bye.